Greetings, good evening everyone. Welcome all my family, friends, and neighbors, and outlaws and enemies. <laughs> anyway, we're here to love on you. We're here to give you a word of encouragement. This is our evening terabyte, Sunday evening. Uh, there are those that uh, go to church on Sundays, those that call themselves the church, and those that are part of the kingdom. There's three phases in scripture. This is why they had common salvation, great salvation, and eternal salvation in the scriptures. Eternal salvation, you'll find it in the book of Hebrew, as he points out that we're moving into, as you cross over, you're coming into the realm of eternal salvation. I will show you a verse where he delivers, continues to deliver, and we shall be delivered. Who? Come on now. That's when you're reaching into the realm of immortality. So for us to even be candidates, for us to be a royal seed, for us to be part of the residue, you've got to begin to speak like you're walking in it. Yeshua, he spoke it even though they were criticizing his stuff and said, no, on the third day I will rise again. He wasn't, he was speaking prophetically, but when he was born through a virgin birth, through the womb of Mary, everything that he spoke prophetically now became a manifestation. It was just in due time, he would walk through what he prophesied about. So here we are tonight, we're about our Father's business, and one of these days soon we'll be in a twinkling of an eye in the fullness of the Yahed bodily. What a powerful time. Some of you probably will never see death if you are in the time slot of your destiny. Are you, if you're tracking with the Father, if you're pacing Him and not racing Him and not trying to get ahead of yourselves, but you're going through process, you're welcoming things, you know that you became the tithe, you're not giving a tithe, even though it's a lifestyle, so now when you come to that level, you're not just the tithe yourself, spirit, soul, and body, but you're also giving of your offering, your tithes, and your abandoned giving. And why? Because this is the time, these are the hours where what you and I are doing is for our heavenly account. As, uh, as time prevents, because you know what? All of us are seeing right now, some of us are working, some of us are not. So there's a prevention that's going on, but in this time of prevention, it's not that you are being held back from working. You're some or all are being held back to getting on our knees. Once again, we know, now watch this. Promotion cometh from him. So if you want to walk into the promotion of what your value is, then you don't have to uh, walk it out. You have to begin to prophesy what you're going to walk into. This is why you come out to enter in. You come out of a realm to enter into a new realm. You come out of the outer court to enter into the yes holy court. And then the most holy or the kadosh kadosh court. Deuteronomy 16, for all those that are following us uh, last week at the last um, setting that we had together, we were talking about setting you up into the realm of the entrance of his word bringeth light and understanding unto the simple. It's the entrance of your word. As you are entering into the word, you come into a place of illumination, transfiguration, realization, glorification. And then you begin to see yourself in such a whole different dynamic way that the Godhead bodily is what you're functioning out of. There's no resistance to anything. The enemy doesn't resist you. The Father's not resisting you because you have drawn nigh. But it takes time. It takes discipline. This is why even the scripture gives you a, a portion of how to discipline. It says, early in the morning, them that seek me shall find me. Well, it didn't say you're not going to find them if you seek them in the afternoon. But the principle is the entrance of his word bringeth light and understanding unto the simple. So once you enter in by seeking him early, you find him and you walk out the rest of the day in light. Why? Because your word is a lamp and a light unto my path. So there, all these are scriptures that piggyback one another or it's the right side of the wing of the dove. So now you're flowing in a balanced 
You're flowing in a balanced revelation of who you are. The Father says to you in the book of Timothy that you're going to experience immortality. But it comes through the gospel. It comes through what you and I are being introduced to. The Feast of Tabernacles. In the Passover, you met Jesus or Yeshua. In Pentecost, you met the Ruach Kadosh or some of you may call him Holy Spirit. But in Tabernacles, my, 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 I love it so much. You meet the Father. You get to see the Father for what he is in you. You get to minister the Father because he's willing to be released through you. He has to fill you to capacity so that once you're full of the capacity of the Father, then he can pierce through you and begin to move through your life and begin to touch the lives of many others that you are being drawn to. This is why you're a light in this world of darkness. He said, I'm the light of the world. But he was also saying, you and I are the light. Why? Because he dwells in us. And if you have confessed with your mouth, believed in your heart, in the simplicity of that, it takes faith to believe that you confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart. That's how easy it is. You know, salvation is free, but it'll cost you your life to become a disciple. And once you pay the price to be a disciple, you will gleam the benefits of your sonship. But it takes time. So let's go through the word now. In Deuteronomy 16. We read right here in verse 16, 16. And it's a powerful time because we talked about Passover. Then we talked about how there was unleavened bread and first fruits. And we went right to Pentecost. And in Deuteronomy, here it is. Uh, that's why I, I went from Passover, then to Pentecost, then to Tabernacles. And within the, the in the in betweens, there's trumpets, Day of Atonement. Okay, my watch this. Three times in a year shall all the males appear before Yahuwah thy Elohim in the place which he shall choose. <laughs> I know we, we, as apostles, we like to choose, come to my house, uh, come to the beach, come to the brook, uh, come to the cave, come to the theater, or come with a gift of thanksgiving. Bring your wallet full. We're going to take a free will offering. And we're always wanting something. But the Father, when you become the tithe, you don't even have to mention to your seed, especially if you're not apostle and you know you've birthed them to being immersed in the Father, it doesn't stop, watch, where he shall choose. In the feast of unleavened bread, oh, remember that, unleavened bread, you're cleaning out the house. <laughs> and in the feast of weeks, oh my goodness, weeks, well what's going on in the feast of weeks? You start walking out what you're believing for. Yeah. Come on now. You start walking it out. Why? Because you're believing for something other than being saved. Well, some of you may say, well, I need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. No, it's already there. When you buy a pair of shoes, you get tongues with it. You know, you'd have to go and cut the old tongue from your old pair of shoes and then have it sewn into your new pair of shoes. You get tongues with it. What's interesting is we have badgered the believers from the point that you're afraid to ask for the baptism of the yeah, function of the Ruach Kadosh. But it's part of you. It's part of the nature of the Father. Tongues comes with it. Why is it called tongues? Well, maybe that's a different uh, terminology. But there's a heavenly language. Kingdom has a language. Church has a language. Believers. There's two types of believers. Unbelieving believers and believing believers. I met a lot of unbelieving believers that believe in God and believe in tongues. You ought to hear them after they drink a, a 12 pack. They, they're told, they're, they totally speak in tongues. And some even gargle. But as, as we go on, and you want to see this, in the Feast of Tabernacle, and they shall not appear before Yahuwah empty. Now see, you think you're going to get filled with all this other precious stuff that w w the word of camp, the camps of faith, faith camps, they literally, uh, my goodness, we disseminated the word of faith to the point that if you're not rich, if you don't have a plane, if you're not doing all these uh, extreme uh, makeovers, that was a show we used to watch, uh, then you're not operating in faith but you know Paul was shipwrecked given for death 
<laughs> uh huh. And uh, he was out in the ocean. He was in prison, and he said, "He's a man of faith." He said, "Faith cometh by hearing." And then he said, anything other than faith is sin. So he was a man of faith, but yet look at all the things that he went through. So I truly believe the characteristics of a son that is pushing and pressing into tabernacles in this hour, you will hear the Melchizedek order, Melchizedek order of the priests, where you yourself begin to move and operate in that priestly anointing where now your seed doesn't enter into a place, but now your seed becomes your willingness to give of the seed that you've earned as a servant to your heavenly father. This is why during the week, some of us work a full week or a half a week or part time, but he gives you for your labor. He gives you fruit or seed to meet your need. There's no longer need, but see, we have preached to everybody. They're, they're so need and in fear <laughs> that we have to have a counseling session to try to alter their way of thinking. And so many of us today, we're thinking about a need consciousness. Instead of realizing you don't have need of anything. Everything you have need of is in you. You just got to learn how to associate the scripture. So let's finish the verse again. He said, in the Feast of Weeks and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear. That's a, a heavy word right there, appear. And they shall not appear before the, who? Yahuwah empty. Now watch this. Okay, let's look at Passover. What do you get in Passover? <laughs> Leviticus 23, verse 5. Don't turn there. Exodus 12, 1 and 2. Don't turn there. Write them down. Exodus 12, 1 and 2. You'll hear about the new beginnings. You'll start learning how to read the calendar. You're no longer uh, serving the Egyptian pharaohs. Let me let that rest because sometimes our mentality, you still have a slave mentality. So therefore, you, this is, a, this is a, a truth that happens. You like to enjoy food, but your mind will tell you, oh, you're wait, look at you, your body's no longer the same. And if you're not careful and know that every, listen to me, every thought you got to bring under the obedience of Yeshua. Every thought you got to tear down, you got to pull down. Otherwise, you'll wrestle with yourself and rob yourself from just enjoying who you are as a son on the planet. The Father provided for you everything you have need of. But there's basic discipline, discipleship training events or discipleship training steps. I remember when I got my first little bike, I had training wheels on it. And then later, as you learn to get your balance, the training wheels go, and now you're riding, and you're thinking, oh, wow, you're all this and that and everything else. And so this is part of training. You've got to learn how to pray. You've got to learn how to be intimate. You've got to learn how to have intimacy through your heavenly language. And as you grow and you start adjusting, you can hear certain Hebrew frequency sounds that are part of the sound of the letters as you begin to practice the letters. That's what Passover does. Here's another one, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Your spirit man begins to tell you you're a new creation. The head of this new creation is the Son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Hashem. His name is Hashem. The name. Yeshua. And, and as we continue to press through, then we see where Yeshua HaMashiach becomes the Lamb. You get a revelation of the Lamb and you begin to see and associate how the Lamb died for you, how the Lamb went to the cross of Calvary for you, how the Lamb went into the Garden of Gethsemane to be pressed to the point that he had to sweat drops of blood from his forehead. Why? To de <laughs> to nullify the noemas that the enemy would shoot at your head between your ears. The battle is what's between your ears. The Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 10, 4, it talks about the thoughts. The, the word thoughts there in the Greek is noema. So the noemas that you have to take full 
control. You have to take custody. You can't let them get out of, out of I was going to say, you can't let them get out of Dodge. Sometimes you need them. You need to get out of Dodge <laughs> because wherever you go, they're right there. They haven't left you. But you got to learn how to do these things. And as you do, then you come into an understanding that if there's no more blemish, then the lamb was killed and the blood was applied on the doorpost. Your forehead and your walk. Your forehead and your walk. And as you're walking out salvation, as you're walking out the three realms, outer court, holy court, holy of holies, you begin to mature because you're adding this to your spiritual arsenal. Mm. And then when the enemy says, oh, there's a plague by the name of coronavirus, you just stand strong in him because the war is over. He told you, comfort ye, comfort ye, comfort ye my people. My bride is comforted. I'm protecting her. Therefore, I'll deal with the enemy. When he is in you, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You have nothing to lose. This is why we're beginning to move into tabernacle. Mishkan, you're the temple of the Ruach Kadosh. Until we see each other again, I just want you to think on this. I'm the temple? Yes, you are the temple. And you do not go before your father empty. You bring him, watch this, you bring him Passover. It's meeting Yeshua. Some call him Jesus. You bring in Pentecost, Sukkot, and you're filled now two-thirds. And now you need tabernacles. This is why you're able. He enables you in the name of Yeshua. Be Baruch. Hallelujah. He enables you that you have victory in all aspects of your walk. I know the people in the world hated you. They hated him and they didn't even know him. They weren't even born. But I liken it like this. The enemy already knew what we would go through. So he begins to entice you by having you eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Until we meet again, do not eat of that fruit of good and evil. But keep your eye on the word. Keep your eye on the steak. Ooh, yeah, medium rare, well done. But keep your eye on that stake, and then one of these days you will see yourself moving in such a dimension that when you hear Joshua's point of view from in tune with the triune Ekad or Virginia's view on let Isha speak, all of those are geared to encourage you to fill yourself up with the outer court, the holy court, and the most holy court. Until we see each other again, shalom.